Hi, this is Sia, and I'm doing a recording of the Divine Speaker demo. Doesn't it look gorgeous? I love the starting screen. Let's start. The birth of a child heralds many things. Change, adaption, confusion, but most importantly... Yes. The judgment. The judgment. A newly born child's first destination isn't its mother's arms, but the embrace of another. The divine speaker, the person tasked with determining a child's destiny from the day they are born till the day they die. You must be pretty busy going to every single birth. This destiny is determined by lottery. The speaker's hand guided by the forces above always chooses the correct fate for the correct child mm -hmm. this judgment guides them on the path to eventually becoming the person they were always destined to be interesting you can tell that a lot of effort's been put into this already gets dark oh sure that's not suspicious I quickly glanced over at the matron's direction and she gave me a short nod didn't really have the authority to tell them what they could do but that never stopped them from coming to ask me they knew I could never say no to them all right but make sure to be back before sundown and don't go anywhere close to the forest okay Thank you, Rain! We promise we won't! But why aren't we allowed to ever play there? Can we go when we're adults? Because it's probably scary. No, you can't. But why? It's not fair! I let out a sigh but felt a small smile rising to my face. I couldn't help chuckling at their curiosity. They would ask the same question every time they wanted to go out and play. Sounds irritating. Come over here and I'll explain it to you play every day. I went over to the table at the far end of the hall. The top was littered with paper, children's books and pencils. Buried among them was a map. Look closely at this map while I explain. Our home, Aurelia Cavella, is surrounded on all sides by the forest. The forest is full of bad guys and dangerous animals. Do you know why? Because the divine beings don't protect the outside. That's right. The beings above protect us while we are inside Aurelia Cavella. But that protection doesn't extend outside of our land. No one can survive out there. That's why everyone lives here, where we can be safe and happy. I know it might seem unfair now, but <laughs> you'll understand when you're older that we're just trying to protect you. There's just nothing out there to find. The forest goes on infinitely, with us right at the center. Everyone in the entire world lives here? I guess some people might find it annoying to answer the same questions every day. Not me, though. Mm, I, I imagine it would be quite annoying. When I was their age, I asked exactly the same questions to the older kids. 
Well, it does sound kind of suspect, never leaving the towns. <laughs> That's right. That's the way it's always been. But what's this place over there? Uh, Zuras? She pointed to a place to the north of the city, with the name Azuras written underneath it on the map. Ah, Azros? I don't really know much about it, but... Once you get old, and not old like me, I mean ancient, the divine beings in the speaker reward you for your lifetime of serving them. All the elders go to live there alone in peace and relaxation. Sounds like they get murdered. I hear it's pretty luxurious, but I've never been there. You can only go when you're called upon. The kids looked up at me, obviously interested in hearing more. There just wasn't much more to say. No one really knew what it was like in there. Because they're all dead. The speaker tells us that the luxuries of Azeroth. And it makes us work all the more harder to one day get in there. That's all we know about it. <laughs> now go out and play before the sun starts setting. They both scurried off out of the door, running and screaming the whole way. <laughs> They're so cute. They're bas basically my little brother and sister. In actuality, though, I have no real family. Oh, I was dumped on the side of the road the day I was born. I don't really think about it much, though. Does that mean the, dev the speaker didn't visit him? I never knew my parents, and the family I have here are more amazing than words. So it's hard to be angry about it. Rain, may I speak with you for a moment? Oh, is this? Oh, the... I looked up towards that voice. The matron's a tough woman, but good at what she does. She looks, she's looked after me my entire life, along with dozens of other children. She's like a parent to of all course, of us. Of course, ma'am. What do you need? I hope it was okay to let the children out to play for the day. No, no, it's nothing about that. I just like to have a chat. So it's not okay that the children went out to play? She's really You've angry. You've been with us for a long time already. I found you in the gutters about 18 years ago today. I think I knew what she was getting at. It's true I should be coming of age about now, so she probably thinks it's about time for me to be moving on. Yes, it has been a long time. If you give me a few days, I'll say goodbye to the children and start packing up. What? I think you misunderstand. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a small envelope. This is for you. Happy birthday. Go and get yourself something nice. She smiled at me, bright and warm, but it quickly changed to a scowl. Oh, mood changed as a drop of the hat. Also, don't think you're getting out of here anytime soon. I'd go out of my mind answering those questions oh. every day. It's a free labor. It's nice. She pushed the envelope into my hands and walked away, brisk as ever. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. I'll head out and pick up the groceries you asked me to get earlier then. Uh, be back soon. I pushed the old heavy wooden door open and stepped outside into the sunlight. The sun was high up in the sky, but a nice breeze soared through the city. It was a beautiful day, but I couldn't help but notice that the flowers that were in full bloom yesterday were already wilting. Maybe no one watered them this morning. Anyway. I guess that must mean today is my birthday. I knew it was coming up sometime soon, but it's never really been a big event in my life. Usually it just passes by without me realising. I look closely at the envelope in my hands. This is the first time I've ever been given a birthday present. I almost don't want to open it. It's kind of scary given, getting given something out of nowhere, huh? Curiosity was beginning to get the better of me, though. Okay. Three, two, one, go! I tore the seal open in one fell swoop. Oh, oh my. By the gods. That envelope looks very neat considering he tore it open. Inside was ten marks, which was more money than I'd had in my entire life, and the letter addressed to me. Well, let's see. Dear Rain. Dear Rain, happy birthday, my dear. I'm sorry we couldn't afford much to give you, but I hope it's enough for you to get something you like. The kids have been saving up just for you. From the day I found you, I've always thought of you as a son. Know that you're of age. 
It won't be long until you will be matched up yourself and have your own children. Until that day, please stay with us at the orphanage. Both the children and I would be lost without you. I'm sure if your parents saw you now, they would be proud of you, just like I am. Yours, Matron Arala. <laughs> I couldn't stop myself. My eyes welled up instantly and overflowed all over the letter. Thank you. My family at the orphanage is more than I could ever ask for. They saved this just for me, so I can't let them down. I'll have to buy something amazing to share with them. With determination, I started on the way to the marketplace. The markets were just past the town square on the west side of Irulia, Cavella. The town square was where the new children came for their judgments and where the speaker made his proclamations. The beings above sing praise for the contributions you have given to our humble home. Is that the speaker? Likewise, they implore you to continue giving your lives over to them, for they provide you with protection from the evils lurking inside the forest. Huh. Looks like the Divine Speaker is declaring something right now. He's got a really nice voice. He was dressed head to toe in white and gold, the definition of elegance in his ceremonial gowns. His long silvery white hair reached down his back neatly. I understand your frustrations about our failed crops. But do not worry yourselves, for the beings above have a reason for everything. Soon you will see why they have put you through these trials. Sounds dodgy. The failed crops? I think I heard a bit about it from the matron. It seemed like this was the first time in hundreds of years that they had failed this badly. Oh, well, yes, speaker's Lord not speaker. doing his job. Before I knew it, I was already in the crowd, chanting along with the other residents. The eloquent and beautiful way he spoke was almost hypnotizing. He's the most highly respected person in Aurelia Cavella, second only to the gods. The whole time he spoke, the crowd stood mesmerized. I was so immersed, I didn't even notice he was already nearly finished. In due time, all of you shall be Oops. rewarded with the freedom that Azeros brings. With this in mind, I hope you will continue your offerings and duties. Thank you. Never trust someone that stands on a balcony above everyone else. Applause exploded out from the crowd as he finished his speech. Smiling, he waved and cast his eyes around the crowd. I waved and cheered along with the crowd. Before his eyes met mine. Ooh, and he's got such pretty eyes too. Almost instantly, a shock ran through my body. Ooh. I don't know if that was a shock. That was more like a heartbeat. The shock changed to heat, and the heat changed to burning. Before I knew it, I crumbled to the ground, gasping for air, and felt like my lungs were on fire. Every breath burnt my insides even more. I like the effect. It's ripping my eyes out, though. Everyone around was watching me, but worst of all were his eyes, the speakers. I could still f feel his eyes boring into me. It's like he could see everything. I need to escape them, now. I forced myself back to my feet ran as fast as I could and ducked into a nearby alleyway. I could feel the world around me getting darker, blurrier. I fell to the ground in a fetal position, sobbing. Abruptly, the pain started to move. It concentrated itself into my left arm, with the force of all my previous pain put together. Anyone, please... I shuddered, clutching my arm and enduring the scalding pain before my vision went black. You must protect. Who, who, who are we protecting? Awaken. Destiny. Judgment. Ooh. Sounds promising. <laughs> oh, it's dark. I blinked a few times, trying to work out where I was. The darkness that surrounded my vision wore off slowly as I sat up. That's right. I was in the town square, listening to the speaker. And then... Wait. Did I collapse here? I quickly checked over my body. The pain was completely gone. Huh? Yeah, well, that would be confusing. What? What is this? It's... It's an arm! Oh my god, it's an arm! 
When I looked closer, I noticed something that hadn't been there before. Some kind of strange markings were running down my arm. It's not a language I'd ever seen before. My first instinct was to try and scratch them off. How was that your first instinct? But it was like it'd been branded onto my skin. He wasn't going anywhere. It's a long arm. I have to get back to the orphanage. They won't know where I am. When I left the sun, it was still high in the sky, but now it's already night. How long had I been out? A while. I stood up slowly, holding onto the wall for balance. <sighs> Ow. The burning sensation was gone, and all I was left with was the sore body, probably from laying on the ground for so long. Where am where I? Am I, I, I guess I'll head... I guess I'll head back the way I came. Probably let him talk. Through the thick darkness, I followed the alleyway back the way I came. After a little searching, I found somehow found the way back to the town square. A few people puzzled, buzzed, not puzzled, God, I can't even read anymore, buzzed about doing last minute shopping or helping to clean. I clutched my branded arm close to my chest, making sure to keep it out of view. Well, it's it's got a thingy on it. I don't know what they'd do if they saw it. I don't even know what it is. I couldn't help glancing around nervously, like some kind of thief that's always on edge. That's why I didn't notice when I ran headlong into someone and got knocked off my feet. Ouch! Oh, hello. I looked up at the person standing over me. He was a tall, lean man, probably in his twenties, with dark red hair that reached down his back. He does have very pretty hair. Uh, I'm so sorry. He stood there for a moment, just watching me. His gaze made me nervous. It was like a snake sizing up his prey. When I noticed it wasn't me he was staring at, but the markings that ran up the inside of my arm, I instinctively clutched my arm to my chest. Is this where you usually spend your time bumping into people, or do you have a few favorites? Sorry about the dog. She gets excited when the cat touches her bed. What? No. I don't usually bump... Ah, oh, I guess this is a privilege then. I feel lucky. He sounds cocky. I like him. My mouth just kind of hung open. I'd never met someone so rude before. I'm very sorry for running into you. I was just trying to get home quickly too. To hide whatever that is on your arm? Again, all I could do was look at him in shock. We stared at each other for a moment before he held his hand out to me. Let me help you up. If you stay down there long enough, people will start to think you're part of the scenery. Ooh, a choice. Hmm. Take his hand or stand up yourself. Well, I, f I just, I really want to touch him, so we're going to take his hand. I hesitated for a split second before grabbing his hand gently. He pulled me up to my feet, and I could finally see just how tall he was. Uh, thank you. Just try not to make a habit of looking so sketchy. Who knows what kind of people you'll attract? Red-headed cocky people, probably. The smirk on his face when he said that was unnerving. I think it's time to leave. No, no, just stay with him. He's cute. Of course. I should really be heading off now. I'm late. Again, I'm very sorry for the commotion I caused. Oh, he is tall. I quickly turned to leave. I've wasted too much time here, and this guy was kind of scaring me. It's because he's so adorable. Wait a second. I know something about the markings on your arm. Adorable, but dodgy. I whirled around to face him again, faster than I've ever moved before. You do? Don't trust him. Whoops. Uh, I mean, you do? What do you know about it? It's too late to be smooth. He already knows you're desperate. I know the speaker keeps tomes written with the same markings in his personal archive. He's actually allowing visitors, but tonight only. Mm. Too bad you seem so busy. This might be the last time it's ever open to the public. Anyway, good night. Don't trust him. He turned around and slipped off into the shadows. I was left with his words just hanging in the air. Uh, 
I guess one more slight detour wouldn't hurt. I'm already late as it is. I bit my lip. There's no way I could miss this chance. If it's the only way I'll ever find out what these markings mean. Well, you haven't really tried at all. You've only just got them. Determined, I headed off to the direction of the speaker's archives. It took a while to walk across the town to the speaker's combined residence and church. Every time I see it, I can't help but be impressed. This is the first time I have ever heard about anyone being allowed into his personal archives. I think even the Lord has restricted access. Maybe this is my lucky day after all. Oh, doubtful. Very doubtful. I walked up to the door and knocked lightly. Hello? Speaker? Are you home? When I knocked, the door swung open. It was already unlocked, and I could see the light from inside. I guess he's probably already in there, showing the archives to other people. Excuse me! I opened the door further and followed a corridor down to another door that was slightly ajar. When I entered the room, I almost toppled over in astonishment, for what would have been the third time I fell today. Bookshelves lined the walls, going up to the ceiling, tomes of, and documents littered every surface, and the hazy light the candles flickered all over everything only furthered my amazement. It's very pretty. It was beautiful. Never in my life had I seen this many books. I walked in further, feeling the spines with my fingers and smelling the musty scent of the room. Various books littered the tabletop in the centre of the room. I walked closer to them. I read some of the titles, A Brief History, Sid Cam, Bloodlines. There were thousands of books here I would love to read. It's too bad he's only allowing visitors today. Yeah, well, it doesn't look very busy. I picked up the first book, A Brief History. I flicked through it slowly, reading a few sentences of each page. It looked like some of the pages were missing. It would jump from talking about the palace being built to the animals that inhabit our land naturally. Let's see. Foundation? The Kingdom of Aurelia Cavella was founded by Prince Shion on the second eve of Augustus. I've never heard of who first founded our kingdom. This book must be really old if it's talking about that. I put the first book back in its place and moved to Sid Cam. Well, I tried to. But every page was covered in black ink, making it unreadable. It looks like someone had a bit of an accident with this one, and an inkwell. Bloodlines looked less like an official book and more like a notebook, but I was interested anyway. I opened it to the middle. It looked kind of like a birth record, maybe of high-class bloodline. On this page, the bloodline started with King Shion of Sid Cam. 10XX and moved down to more recent times. It ended with Prince Caspian. Oh, I keep reading about this Sid Cam. I wonder what it means. Wait a second. Prince Shion was the founder of the kingdom, right? That must mean this is the royal bloodline. But why does it only start 300 years ago? But really, a Cavella has always been here for thousands of years. Yep, speaker's lying to you. There must be a mistake here, surely. People had to live somewhere before then, and everyone knows there isn't anywhere inhabitable outside our protected lands. There's only here. And the forest. I flicked the page over to the next one. <sighs> this page was entirely in a script I've never read before. When I looked at the markings on my arm, I could tell some of the characters matched. It still resembled the layout of the page before it, so I guess it's also some kind of list of names. It looks like the last person added to this list was 19 years ago. I wonder if that's how old he is. So absorbed in trying to work out what that meant, I didn't hear the sound of someone opening well, the door behind well, me. Well, An intruder in my archives? Oh no, he didn't call it. Told you. I whipped around to face the voice. It was none other than the speaker himself. I'd never seen him up so close. I hid the book instinctively inside my cloak. Ah, oh. uh, speaker! Oh, God, he's... I thought the redhead was tall. I dropped to one knee in front of him out of respect. Uh, thank you so much for having the archives open today. I've never seen so many books. Excuse me? Having the archives Told open? you it was bullshit. He looked at me with visible confusion on his face. That's right. 
the man in the town square. He told me. Wait, what? He definitely told me it was open to all today, right? The speaker looked as if he knew nothing about it. I'm not sure who told you what, but my archives are off limits to all but myself. Behind him, I could see guards appearing from every direction. Trespassing in a restricted zone is an act of treachery. The only punishment fit for someone betraying their own home is death. Oh. I could feel my stomach drop when he said that. Death. It was very dramatic. Nearly nobody received a death sentence here. It was used only for the highest acts of treason or murder, which we basically never had. No, yep. No, wait, but please, I'm not betraying. I just wanted to read. Just wanted, to, just wanted to read. I don't know what your intentions were coming here, but I must act in the best interest of both our residents and the gods. Guards, take him. Wait, his intentions were to read. No, wait there just a minute, speaker. Who? Oh, who's this? I could see someone pushing through all the guards, making their way to the front of the crowd. It was our lord who works with the Speaker to uphold our land. not equipped to suddenly have a public execution, Sir Speaker. We haven't needed one in years. In this case, I think it would be best to exile him. Being out there in the forest is a death sentence anyway. My heart dropped even further. I thought he had come to my rescue, but what he was suggesting was worse than death. No one in my lifetime had ever been exiled. The things you would endure out there would be much nastier than the quick hanging you would get here. Please! I didn't mean... Silence. He stood in front of me, his icy eyes digging into my soul. I couldn't help but think about earlier in the town square when our eyes met. I flinched away from his gaze. Yes, you're right. Why dirty our own land with the blood of a criminal when we can let nature take care of it for us? Guards, take his arms. I'll escort him to the forest's edge. Both of my arms were seized by the burly guards. There was no hope of escaping. All I could do was follow behind the speaker, being pushed from behind the whole way. I hung my head in shame as I was paraded through the town. I could see faces peering at me from windows everywhere I went. Seems kind of late for that. All I could do was look down at the ground. Who could blame them? I would watch too. Release him. You may go. I will handle this from here. The two guards saluted before marching off back into town. Once we couldn't see their backs anymore, he spoke. I don't know why you would do what you did. Nevertheless, you must now live with oh, the he consequences. He told you. He wanted to read. This might seem unfair. It would be best for you to learn just how unfair this world can be, though. I looked up into his face. I couldn't tell what he was thinking at all, but I was mesmerized. Don't be mesmerized. He's an ass. He reached up and lightly caressed my chin with his fingertips. Up close, his long eyelashes trem trembled in the wind, and he looked almost ethereal, like he himself was one of the beings above. You look just like your father did. He, he knows who your father is. At that, he released my face and turned to leave. Run. Run and don't look back. Just like he did. What? I, I feel like there's more I want to know here. Don't run. His back slowly disappeared into town. I thought about going back the same way, hiding at the orphanage, but everyone just saw me being marched through town like that. W what about the fact that he knows who your dad is? I had no choice. I had to leave with only the clothes on my back, the envelope from the matron, the book I had stolen accidentally from the speaker, and my regret. And the fact that the speaker knows who your dad is. I ran. I ran like I'd never had before. I felt, it felt like my heart would burst out of my chest at any second and my lungs burnt with every breath. Muscles I didn't even know I had ached. Even when I thought I couldn't go any further, I kept running. When I finally collapsed, all I could see was trees and darkness in all directions. I was completely lost. <sighs> I lay down on my back and caught my breath. What can I do now? I've lost everything. No home to return to. No family. What would every one of the orphanage think when they find out? Would they be disappointed? Angry? Would they just think I've abandoned them? Betrayed them? 
A million thoughts ran through my head all at once. I took a deep breath of the fresh forest air and calmed my thoughts. It was only then when I realised the situation I was in. Here I was, sprawled out on the forest floor, alone, at night. I suddenly picked up on all the things I hadn't noticed before. A scratching sound, bushes rustling, a howling from somewhere far in the distance. The wind picked up and whipped my hair around my face, only adding to the sudden terror that had struck my heart. All the stories I'd been told since childhood about venturing outside Aurelia Cavella hit me, and I hadn't only heard of them, I'd repeated the same ones to the children time and time again. Nobody left the confines of Aurelia Cavella. The forest was a dangerous place that spread to the far corners of the planet, and only by the protection from the beings above had we lived in peace for so long. I strained my eyes, trying to look into the darkness that surrounded me. Finally, I dragged myself up from the forest floor. I pulled my coat tighter around myself for security and nervously chuckled, nervously checked that I'd still had all of my belongings before turning back the way I came. Maybe if I stay closer to the city lights, it'll scare away any danger. <sighs> it was this way, right? Yeah, good luck, buddy. Or... No matter which direction I turned to face, the trees looked the same, and from every angle I could hear strange noises. Come on! Which way? Which way? I whipped my head from left to right before dropping my head into my hands. I unconsciously let out a sigh. <laughs> it's hopeless. Once again, I was surrounded by the sounds of the forest and the feeling of the unknown. Who knew it would be this scary? An eerie feeling gripped my heart. I could feel eyes on me. No. I must be imagining it. Nope. Definitely eyes on you. Suddenly, it was quiet. All I could hear was my own heartbeat, quickening by the second. I had to get out of here. With no sense of direction, I just ran. Ran and could, until I couldn't run anymore. <sighs> no matter where I went, everything looked the same. The trees started to blend together in my eyes, becoming one entity. I collapsed on the ground and crawled backwards until my body hit a tree. Just having something behind me made me feel more secure. I buried myself into its huge roots. I could barely see my hand in front of my face in the pitch black darkness. The night was freezing. I brought my knees up to my chest, hugging it tight to try and get some warmth. I felt the letter that I had hidden in my clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry. With the letter clutched close to my heart, I shut my eyes to try and escape from the dangers of reality. Destined child. False prophecy. Speak. Awaken. <laughs> I, just want, I just want to say that I really like Rain's voice actor. He does the emotion very well. I awake with a start. What was with that dream? I feel like that's not the first time either. Everything felt kind of hazy, and I could barely recall what it was about. I uncurled my body from the forest floor and started to take notice of my surroundings. Rays of bright light shone between the tree branches, bringing a slight warmth to my face. It felt nice after the cold wind from last night. The air felt crisp, which must be a sign it's still early. What? 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 When I f finally started looking around me, I noticed something strange. Why is he so pretty? I was surrounded by beautiful flowers, kinds I'd never seen before. When did these get here? Probably there all along. It was so dark last night that I couldn't tell if they were here before. They could have been, but formation is a little strange. I let out a sigh. Uh, what's with all of these strange things happening to me? You're the chosen one, Harry. The strange pain I had in the town square just yesterday, the dreams that I could only half remember, not to mention the markings on my arm, and that the speaker knows who your dad is. I raised her by my... A ra what? A raised by uh, my arm. There's a little spelling error. Up to the sky, inspecting it closely in the light. 
I traced the symbols lightly with my fingertips. It's definitely the same symbols from the book I brought with me. What is it trying to tell me? I absentmindedly played with the flowers that surrounded me whilst recalling the events of yesterday. I need to find someone that can read these markings. But there's no way I'll be able to sneak back into Aurelia Cavella. This is when we need a learning montage. Oh, here we go. I pulled the book out and looked through some of the other pages. I could read majority, but they looked re relatively unimportant. It was mostly just charts and lists. The most important parts were the king's bloodline and the one in the unknown language that matched my markings. Everyone knows the monarchy unexpectedly ended around 20 years ago, but the reasons were why weren't widely known or disclosed. I looked over the names again. King Shion of Sid Kaim. What is this Sid Kaim? Why does the bloodline only start 300 years ago? And then Prince Caspian, 37 years ago. Was this his birth date? The date he was crowned? He could still be alive. He might be able to tell me what this marking means. If only I knew where he was. Maybe it's your dad. Uh -huh. I suddenly realized just how hungry I was. I guess the last time I ate any food was yesterday. I tried to swallow, but my throat felt all dry and scratchy. I'm seriously thirsty. I searched my pockets, but I didn't have anything to eat with me. Finally, I got up and stretched my shoulders out. I'd give anything to sleep on a bed instead of the ground again. First task today, find water. Easier Smart said body. than done, of course. I glance at the trees around me, but I have no clue which way I came from last night. I'll just have to pick a direction and hope for the best. I brushed the dirt off my clothes and started my hike to find water. The sun was out high above me now, warming my chilled body and calming my mind. Compared to last night, the forest wasn't even half as terrifying. Sunlight filtered through the green leaves above, leaving interesting patterns all over the ground. I really like how the shadow is also on the on rain. Mo moss grew over the moist tree trunks and roots, making everything look fuzzy and warm. I could hear the faint tweeting of birds up in the canopy. Instead of a scary, it was actually kind of beautiful. The only sounds I could hear was my own breathing and twigs breaking under my boots. It was peaceful, even serene, when the sun was up. Without noticing, I was slowing my pace, taking in the scenery and enjoying the atmosphere. Everything that happened last night felt like a dream. Wildflowers littered the ground where I was walking, so I tried to avoid stepping on them. I leant down and picked one to bring with me. I kept walking at my own pace like this for a while, before I was hit with foul stench that quickly overpowered the fresh smell of the flower in my hand. It was kind of like off meat mixed with something sickeningly sweet. I kept walking and it kept getting stronger. What is that? In the distance I could see some kind of cloth jutting out from under the bush. The closer I got, the more overpowering the smell was. It looked, some, it looked like some kind of knapsack. Could there be food in there? Water? Something I could use out here? I tried to pull it out from under the bushes, but it must have been stuck in the branches. I grabbed on with both of my hands and gave one big pull. Whoa! That sounded disgusting. It came out easily when I used all of my weight, but I pulled so hard I fell backwards on my butt. The smell was suddenly so sickening that I couldn't help but gag. Ugh. When I looked down at my lap, the knapsack was sat between my legs and I could feel something wet touching my leg. I reached down to grab it. Whatever it was, it was stone cold and slightly damp. What? What is that? I held my breath. The stench completely overwhelmed my senses. Slowly, I wrapped my hand around it and pulled it into view. Three, two, it's one. Old body part. With a final surge of courage, I pulled it into view. <laughs> no. I could feel all the blood instantly drain from my face. I threw it as far as I could, but I could still see it poking out from the bushes. I scrambled away as fast as possible, trying to put some distance between myself and that... thing. No. 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 This isn't happen- I turned away quickly and my stomach lurched. The bag wasn't stuck in the bushes, it was stuck on in someone's arms. And I just pulled one right off. Love it. 
I brought my hand to my chest, the feeling of my heartbeat on my palm, the only thing making this feel real. <laughs> I gagged again, this time much more violently. I probably shouldn't find this funny. Than before, it was my lucky... It was just lucky my stomach was still empty. Probably burn, though, with the bile. <coughs> There's no way. This couldn't be happening to me. Just yesterday, I was living a normal life, safe, happy. How did it come to this? I glanced back in the direction I threw it. It hadn't moved, but it would have been amazing if it had moved. An arm. A decomposing human arm. Who would be out here? I can't think of anyone wanting to leave a really a Cavella. No one leaves. I've never even heard of anyone else being expelled. Then, have others also been outcast like I was? How long had their body been there? Another wave of nausea washed over me. I could feel the moisture on my hands. The slimy mucus left a brown sludge all over my palms. I rubbed my hands on the ground until they were red raw, but the stains weren't going anywhere. Why won't it come off? Get off! Please, get off! Most of it was gone, but I could still tell it was there. It felt disgusting. The pangs of hunger I felt only a few minutes ago were completely gone. Thank the gods I hadn't found anything to eat yet. I would have instantly lost it. I couldn't move. There has to be a reason it's out here, so far from Aurelia Cavella, but why? What could have done this to them? I glanced back towards the bushes from behind my fringe. If there was an arm, was the rest of them there too? <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to find out. Please, please look. I have, I have to get out of here. <laughs> I leapt back to my feet, spun around and sped away, giving no notice to the knapsack I left on the grass. Ah, oh, come on. You should take the knapsack. How long have I been running? I could still feel it. When I looked down at my hands, there was nothing there, but I could still feel it. No matter where I looked, I felt like it was still there, almost watching me. The arm. The sound it made when I ripped the bag from the bushes, it echoed through my mind. Wait, what's that? It's running water. Oh. I could definitely hear a faint trickling nearby. I quickened my pace and burst out from the trees in a flurry of leaves. Water! Oh, that's a pretty looking river. I was met with a river on either sides of the banks with littered, colourful array of trash, clothing and various odds and ends. Barely noticed though, all that mattered is that I could get clean and drink. Without any thought, I kicked off my clothes and stripped down to my underwear as I ran towards the water's edge. I launched myself from the bank directly into the river. Who cares about walking around with wet underwear later? Someone's definitely going to find you. The shallow water came up to my waist. The, oh, I see a person. The cool water felt refreshing against my sweaty skin. Finally, water. I kept scrubbing in my arms, hands and legs until they were red raw. I felt like I was rubbing away the memories from earlier. Once I was satisfied with that, this person's just, you know, watching because it's fun to watch. I moved on to my hair. The sweat and the grease from yesterday was already building up. <sighs> that feels better already. My head instantly whipped up towards the opposite bank. Um. Oh, hello, cutie. Uh. Mm. Ah, don't be bashful. You've been watching the whole time. Mm -hmm. On the opposite bank stood a young, blue-haired boy with a completely dumbfounded look on his face, his arms full of multitude of items. Before I could open my mouth, he turned and ran. Wait! I bolted back from my clothes and took off in the same direction as I last saw the boy. The shadow is much more noticeable without his clothes on, and I really like that effect. As I ran, I could still hear the distinct sound of leaves and sticks crunching in front of me. At least he hasn't gotten away yet. The ground here looks like it's been used all the time. It formed what could almost be called a path. He must come this way a lot. Between the trees, I caught a brief glimpse of his blue locks. Soon, more of his figure came into view as I gained on him. Hey, wait, please! It's obviously not a runner. 
He obviously wasn't going to wait. He was close enough now that I could almost touch him. I reached out to grab him, but only managed to brush my fingertips against his back. This might be my only chance. I can't risk him getting away. With the last of my energy, I leapt towards him. I have a really good feeling about this. Got you! Huh? I said wait! I tackled the boy to the ground and held him there with my arms to either side of his head. My lungs burnt from the chase. Oh. The boy below me looked terrified. His body was shaking underneath mine. I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> You're naked and you look pretty murderous. <laughs> I just want to talk. He suddenly turned bright red. He wasn't looking at my face though. When I followed his gaze, he was looking somewhere lower. Oh. Then I realized I hadn't gotten dressed yet. Uh, I... Uh, I didn't... I mean... Um... Awkward. I could finally see the boy up close. His pale blue hair was feathered around him. His silvery eyes were wide and scared. When his lips trembled, he looked like he would cry at any moment. He seemed fragile. Breakable. His face was slowly getting wetter the longer I let my soggy hair over him. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, are, are you hungry? Oh, he sounds like a cutie. Uh, yeah. Hungry for you? I quickly got off him and picked my clothes up, cradling them to my chest. I'm going to put my clothes back on, so don't go anywhere, please. The other boy got up slowly, keeping his eyes on the ground and nodding his head slightly. I turned around and slid my clothes back on as fast as I could. I fumbled a little while, try tying my shoes up. I half expected the blue-haired boy to be gone when I turned around, but he wasn't. I'm done now. Listen, I'm sorry for jumping on you like that. I'm not trying to hurt you, but you're the only person I've seen alive out here. Uh, my name's Rain. I reached my hand out towards him. He looked down at my open palm and hesitated. But eventually took my hand and shook it. Uh, uh, Fawn. Oh, Fawn? Cute. Uh, my name? Oh, Fawn. I noticed the items he was carrying were littered across the ground. Ooh, second choice. Well, that seems kind of rude since it's your fault, it's all over the ground. I instantly bent down to help pick him up pick up his things. There were clothes in a rainbow of colours, strange ornaments, glasses without lenses, an array of random junk. When I handed them back to him he smiled at me with his tinted red face. Oh thank you. So what are all of these things? These? They're for my personal collection. His eyes suddenly lit up. Do you wanna see? Yes. Oh, I um, mean, I have food and water back in my house that I could share with you. Really? My hunger and thirst from early had returned with a vengeance. I'm starving. Yeah, there's enough for both of us. With his arms full of items to add to his collection, he turned around and started walking. I guess he wanted me to follow after him. I jogged up to walk beside him. So, Fawn... You live here in the forest? By yourself? Oh, yeah. Not far from here. Not by myself, though. I live with a bunch of my friends. Really? You all live out here together? For how long? I feel like his friends are animals. He stopped for a couple of seconds before speaking again. He seemed pretty deep in thought. A while now. Helpful. Why did you leave Aurelia Cavella when the divine beings don't protect the outside land? What? The speaker says it's too dangerous to even enter the forest, let alone live here. How did you get here? He has no idea. A speaker? Aurelia Cavella? Are you talking about the town to the west of here? Across the river? 
Fawn frowned at me a little, obviously confused by what I was you saying. You don't know the speaker? I've never been there before, so... Wait, so you were born out here? No, I came here as a child. What's up with this guy? Maybe he's delusional from being out here for so long. Uh, alright, sure. Well, or maybe you're the delusional one, Rain. I just let it go. It was obvious Fawn didn't know exactly what he was talking about. Before I could ask anything else, we stopped in front of a tall tree with a rope letter hanging down from it. When I looked up, I could see a small wooden hut set into the trunk. You live in a tree? That is awesome! It's safer to be up high during the night. He's a smart boy. He gave me a soft smile when he loaded a bag full of his new items and slung it across his back. I couldn't help but think about the knapsack from earlier. Best just to try and forget about that. Fawn started climbing up the ladder with ease and waved at me from the top. I guess it's my turn. I grabbed onto the ladder and climbed up after him. Oh, wow. pretty. When I came up the ladder and into Fawn's treehouse, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It consisted of only one room, with a makeshift bed, a couple of chairs, and a few other random bits of furniture. That's not what impressed me, though. You collected all of this from the riverbank? Uh, yes. I've been collecting it all slowly over time. He looked so happy with my reaction. The room was the whole room was filled with different coloured glass, cloth, old books, all manner of items. It all blended together to become something that looked magical. Even though it was all abandoned, thrown together items, there was something homely about it. Fawn was busy scurrying around the room, putting things away and dusting. I watched the light trickle in from the outside. It went through the coloured glass, making the floor into a rainbow. When he finished that, he dug around in some baskets before presenting me with a bowl of mixed fruits and nuts and a cup of full, a cup full of water. <clears throat> My hunger and thirst from earlier had come back with a full force. I greedily ate the food and guzzled down the water. All the while, Fawn sat on the opposite side of the room, watching me. He had an inquisitive look in his eyes. He kind of reminded me of the kids back in the orphanage. He obviously wanted to say something. You're the first person I've ever seen out here, and I've lived here for a very long time. I thought you lived with friends, though. Oh, my friends are actually... Before he could finish speaking, a rustling sound came from outside. It was slowly getting closer, closer, until... Ah! Called it. I, I jumped out of my seat. In the door came a fox, a raccoon, two birds, and a few animals I'd never seen before. Guys, you're back! I looked over a fawn. Obviously, this didn't surprise him. He bed down and pet all the animals, giving them nuts and berries as he went. I couldn't help but stare at the soft smile he had on his face. Uh... Uh, Rain? These are my friends. We've lived together for years now. I'm sorry they gave you a fright. I'll tell them to come in quietly next time. Next time? That's not really the problem, I guess. He leant down further and started whispering to them. You can talk to them? Of course. Sometimes they don't do what I tell them, though. They must just be going through a rebellious phase. Ah, so he can't talk to them then. Didn't say anything, though. There's no point upsetting him. Then I really am the only person you've seen out here. You've been alone since you were a child? Yes. I'm sorry I ran from you. I didn't know what to do when I saw you at the river. And it takes me a bit to think through what I'm saying in my head. I'm not used to talking to other people. <laughs> uh <laughs> I looked at the floor in embarrassment when I remember jumping on him, wet and nearly naked. You're a terrible person, Rain. In the forest, I saw an arm. A dead body. I had to... wash it off of myself. I glanced back up at Fawn. I spent the night running and then slept under a tree. I have absolutely no clue where I am. 
I don't know how you can live here. It's terrifying. He stayed silent for a few seconds. I guess he was thinking through what he was going to say. I can see why you would think that. The forest around here is dangerous, but... He stopped for a moment. It can be beautiful, too. The beauty is hiding danger, but the danger is also hiding beauty. Oh, that was deep. I stared at him. Earlier, I did think it was beautiful for a while, so maybe he's right, still. I would much rather be back in Aurelia Cavella. I see what you mean, but I'm not looking forward to spending another night out there. I wish there was somewhere else to go. One tilted his head. Well, there's a bunch of places you could go. Oxabor, Stagwitch, Duskmoor, Sidkeum, Dewick. They're all pretty close to here. The last time I checked, anyway. My ears perked up at one of the things Vaughn mentioned. Sidkeum? What is what that? Is that? I'm gonna stop talking over him. Ah, uh, it's the... What do you call it? The capital? The capital? The capital of what? Of the region, I suppose? Honestly, I had no clue what he was blathering on about. Capital of the region? What region? Well, obviously the speaker is full of crap. Outside, the sun was slowly disappearing and the night was filling up with stars. I stared outside for a moment, dreading going back. Last night, it was terrifying. But what choice do I have? I guess... I better head off now, before it gets too dark to see where I'm going. Thank you for the food and water. I don't know what I would have done without you there. I got up slowly and made my way towards the ladder. <laughs> Wait! My hand was suddenly clasped from behind before I could start climbing Why don't down. Why you stay here tonight? Really? Would that be okay? Yeah. My bed's only small, but I can sleep on the floor. Oh, no, I couldn't. You take the bed. I'm happy to sleep on the floor. It's much better than outside like last night. Really, I don't mind. Share it. We both looked at each other for a moment before breaking out in laughter. This could go back and forth forever with the two of us. Uh, how about we just share the bed then? I think we'd both fit. Fawn lit up again, as red as a rose. Uh, I've never... He glanced around, not making eye contact with me, fidgeting and playing with his clothes. Shared a bed with anyone before? Was that something to be embarrassed about? Or maybe he's worried I'll push him out of the bed? Don't worry. I'll make sure not to take up too much room. I grew up in an orphanage, so I'm used to sharing beds and stuff. At the word orphanage, he stopped and looked into my eyes. You didn't know your parents? No. Did you? Mm. He looked away no. again. Oh, poor orphan babies. He didn't look like he wanted to talk about it, so I didn't press him. I'm not mad at my parents or anything, though. I had a good family at the orphanage. The judgment I received wasn't particularly good, so that's probably why it happened. Oh, so he was judged. Judgment? What was his judgment? We both shared another confused look. Had being out here alone really made him forget the most simple things. No, you just... Ugh. Yeah, you know, the judgment you receive the day you're born from the Divine Speaker. My fate wasn't very impressive, apparently. You learned your fate the day you're born? Of course. Everyone does. They don't do that where I'm from. Definitely a little confused. I don't think he's the confused one, Rain. Uh, if you're not tired, there's something I'd like to show you. I was feeling a little tired, honestly, but if he was letting me stay here tonight, then I don't mind following him around for a sure. while. Sure. I'm not tired anyway. Lies. His face lit up. He was like... He gets his childlike, adorable look on his face when he gets excited. It's not that far from here. Follow me. Vaughn basically bounced out of the room, down the ladder, and onto the forest floor. I followed after him, not quite sure where this was headed. Ooh, it was very dark. I followed Form for a few minutes before he stopped in his tracks and peered out between the trees. We're here. Follow me carefully. He started climbing downwards, but it didn't look too difficult. 
It was, though, apparently. What? Before I could slip all the way down, Fawn reached out and grabbed my hand. Ah, careful! It can be a little slippery here. Oops. I watched the ground more carefully this time, embarrassed that, he'd sl that I'd slipped after he warned me. I kept a hold of Fawn's hand, and we eventually got to the bottom of the steep hill. It's here. Look. He parted the last of the tree branches and stood in our way. The scene before me was right out of a fairy tale. A large lake was spread out in front of my eyes, the night sky brimming with stars as far as I could see. In the darkness of the night, the lake became a mirror. It reflected those stars right back at the sky, not to be outdone. It, it's... it's beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. Back home, I never would have known this existed. I could barely form words. Who knew something like this could exist? I sat down with Fawn, entranced by the scene that laid out before I me. I thought you might like it. You see, oh. this lake's full of all kinds of fish. Mostly the kind that would like to eat you for dinner. That water is gorgeous. He giggled a little bit. But that doesn't stop it from being beautiful. The world isn't just black and white. There's things in the middle, too. And I think this forest is one of those things. I, th I think I really like Fawn. You didn't look very convinced earlier. So I just wanted to show you that even a dangerous place like this can be somewhere you can call home. It's all about how you look at it. Your perspective on things. <laughs> he quickly withdrew his hand from mine. I completely forgot he was even holding it. This is a pretty big lake, though. It's strange that it's not on the map. I haven't seen a map in a while, so I'm not sure. It was crimson red from the top of his ears to his chin like a tomato. We sat silently, we watched the fish just below the surface, the stars that almost seemed to dance around us. But secretly, I watched Fawn's profile. The moon made his pale skin look even paler. It's a little hard to explain, but it was almost like he fit in with the forest. He was part of it, as much as the trees, the fish, the stars. He belonged. When he caught me staring, he looked away, embarrassed. Anyway, let's head back now. It'll start to get cold soon. Right. I'll try not to slip over this time. When we got when we got back, I started getting ready to sleep straight away. It's been a really long day. It all, all caught up with me at once. I rolled up my sleeve a little and looked at the markings running down my arm. There was no point hiding it from Fawn. I felt like I could trust him enough. Plus, he's bound to find out one way or another. Hey, Fawn? He looked over at me with sleepy eyes. I wanted to show you something. Yesterday, when I was still in Aurelia Cavella, it suddenly appeared on my arm. It hurt, like it was being burnt into my skin. I lifted up my arm and showed him. This? I've seen this writing somewhere before. He grabbed my arm and examined the markings closely. Before I was here, I've, I've definitely seen this somewhere. I watched him excitedly, but to no avail. No matter how hard he thought, it wasn't coming back to him. I'm sorry. How did it happen? I'm not sure. One minute I was in a crowd of people completely fine, and then I was suddenly in so much pain, I blacked out. And when I woke up, it was there. Maybe it's not important. He watched me carefully, thinking. Well, it sounds important to me. I'll keep thinking about it. Maybe it'll come back to me in the morning, after we rest. Turn around while I get ready for bed. Fawn got into the bed first and hid himself under the covers quickly. I shuffled in next to him. It was a bit of a tight squeeze, but at least our skin wasn't touching or anything. I made sure to give him plenty Why of room. Why are you out here anyway? Fawn looked over his shoulder at me, leaving the rest of his body facing the wall. I... They... I tried to think up some good excuse, but there was none. I got exiled. I went somewhere I shouldn't have gone. Honestly, I thought I'd be dead by now. We've always had it drilled into us that you can't survive out here. 
But for some reason, it's not quite as bad as I thought it would be. Vaughn smiled at me, a sleepy, happy smile before turning back over and drifting off to sleep. Didn't take long for me to follow after him. Open your eyes. I want to know who this woman Protect. is. Protect. Heal. Destiny. Open your, your eyes. eyes. Open your eyes. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh, I forgot to read it. Vaughn set up in speed of light, jumping to his oh, what feet. What is it? I waited for my breathing to go back to normal. Uh, no, nothing. I just had a weird dream. I keep having the same one. Oh my gosh. I thought you were dying or we were being attacked or something. But what happened in your dreams to scare you so much? Someone told him to wake up. I thought back over it. What part of it was so scary? Well, I'm not sure. They just seem to be getting more powerful every time. I don't really know. There's voices. Loud powerful, booming voices. They keep telling me something. To open my eyes about death. Vaughn stopped for a minute. Like he does occasionally when he's thinking about what to say. Maybe it means something. It could be some kind of vision. Vision? Things like that don't exist, though. Really? I've heard there are some people with strange abilities. So... I don't see how having visions is much different. But we've always been taught that... <sighs> forget everything you've been taught. Just forget it. I'm sure they don't mean anything. Uh, I'm sorry. You might be right. I was just thinking out loud. You know, you don't need to apologize so much. Especially not for talking. You didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry, I'm... I mean, okay. Vaughn busied himself, moving around the room and preparing food. I looked outside. The sun was just starting to show in the distance, so it was still early. A light mist spread out through the trees. We ate more scavenged food and watched the sun as it rose up above us. Something about all of this seemed too normal, like I'd already been staying here for ages. The events of a few nights ago seemed so distant. All that exists is now. Uh, Rain, I was thinking, I know we only just met. Would you like to live with me here? Oh, that was quick. Oh, it's finished. So their Kickstarter is now live, which is why I'm playing the demo, and after playing I will definitely be supporting them. Uh, the game has a lot of potential and you can see how much work they've put into it. It had very little errors, I think I only noticed one spelling area, but, error, but I wasn't looking very hard. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was very good. From all of us, thank you for playing the demo of the Divine Speaker. Well, we didn't meet this dude. Um, we've only just met, but I can't wait to see you again. I don't think there's anyone here that would want to see you, Pipsqueak. Oh. Leos. <laughs> anyway, there's so much more to show you. Like me. I'll be happy to show Rain any parts he wants. Uh. <laughs> Maybe if you're lucky. You'll get a touch, too. Ah, it's a shame we didn't meet him. I don't think so, Shorty. Huh? Did you say something? Yeah, I said. Leof is probably the one that you trust me most at the moment. Pardon? Hopefully, they reach the stretch goal and we'll see a fourth through. So we have these three. Um, the speaker's not a route. Route, route. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this is getting a little off track. Maybe we should say goodbye now. No yeah, goodbye. Yeah, you two break it up. We need the rest From of the all game. Of us have one last massive thank you. 
Please support us from here on out. So the demo was fully voiced, but I do believe to voice the whole game that they need to reach a stretch goal, which hopefully they reach because I would really like to see the full game of this. So I wish them the best of luck and I would definitely be supporting them. And if anyone's watched the whole thing, thank you, because this is the very first time I've ever recorded myself while I'm reading a visual novel. <laughs>